Greetings, audience. It is I, Swector. Welcome back once again to the Destroying series. Today, I thought I'd do something a bit different. I'm sure a lot of you are already at least slightly aware of who Jack Thompson is. He's often described as one of the main foes of Rockstar Games and the gaming industry as a whole. As a lot of you know, he gained quite a lot of attention back in the 2000s for his anti-violent video games activism. Just as Rockstar Games started to really take off in the 2000s, with huge successes like Grand Theft Auto, Manhunt, and Bully, Jack Thompson spawned out of the deepest, most vile regions of hell to antagonize Rockstar Games. He did so by repeatedly pulling Take-Two Interactive and Rockstar Games into frivolous lawsuits, oftentimes claiming that games such as Bully and GTA would encourage and educate kids in violent behavior, a la killing sprees. For instance, he compared Bully and the Columbine Massacre, calling the game a Columbine Simulator, oftentimes suggesting that games like Bully would be used as a practice tool for people who want to bully others. Or, you know, shoot up their school. Now, despite being an obvious f***ing moron, Jack Thompson received quite a lot of coverage on television, in the newspaper, and on various gaming news sites. Jack Thompson considers himself a real-life warrior. The conservative Christian attorney says he is on a mission to protect children from evil. Evil in the form of popular games like Bully, Manhunt, and Grand Theft Auto. To him, this is not entertainment. It is a murder simulator. You're kicking, punching, ultimately shooting, cutting the heads off of people with machetes of people you don't even know and don't have a motive to be violent against. If you want to learn everything there is to know about the Jack Thompson vs. Bully saga, then I suggest watching my video on that. Link down below and by the end of this video. Now, some of you might be thinking, come on, Swagta, really? Really? You're, you're gonna call him an obvious f***ing moron? I mean, the guy just has a difference of opinion on video games. Yeah, he's wrong, but there's no need to call him stupid. I beg to differ. He is by far one of the most incompetent, vindictive, and moronic public figures I've ever seen. And to prove my point, here's a snippet from the TV show 60 Minutes. In this episode, Jack appears briefly to comment on Devin Moore. Devin Moore being an 18-year-old who shot and killed three police officers. Now Devin, like many other kids at this point in time, enjoyed playing Grand Theft Auto Vice City. So here's what Jack had to say on that. Attorney Jack Thompson, a longtime crusader against video game violence, is bringing the suit. Are you saying that Devin Moore shot three people in the head because of a video game? What we're saying is that Devin Moore was, in effect, uh, trained to do what he did. He was given a murder simulator. He bought it as a minor. He played it hundreds of hours, which is primarily a cop-killing game. It's our theory, which we think we can prove to a jury in Alabama, that but for the video game training, he would not have done what he did. The video game industry gave him a cranial menu that popped up in the blink of an eye in that police station, and that menu offered him the split-second decision to kill the officers, shoot them in the head, flee in a police car, just as the game itself trained him to do. Among the other idiotic statements made by Jack Thompson, you have... The PlayStation 2 DualShock controller gives you a pleasurable buzz back into your hands with each kill. This is operant conditioning behavior modification right out of BF Skinner's laboratory. I'm out to shut down Rockstar because... Are you? Oh yeah, because they're, they're run by a bunch of sociopaths. Uh, and they're a one-company crime wave. Grand Theft Auto is the worst assault on children since uh, polio. And here's one of my favorite quotes by Jack Thompson. This is one of his big, grandiose speeches he made during the court hearing for Bully. What you are in effect doing is rehearsing your physical revenge and violence against those whom you have been victimized by. And then you, like Klebold and Harris in Columbine, become the ultimate bully. And of course, in typical slimy douchebag lawyer fashion, Jack never even bothered to retract this statement. Despite being obviously wrong and proven wrong, he never made any attempts to, uh, back away from the statement. The closest thing to doing that would be, uh, pretending as though he never said it. Now, like I said, Jack Thompson recently decided to give video game activism another shot. He did this by writing an article on the topic of violent video games. Again, but you know, this time it's 2019, so you know, it's gonna matter now. Hey, man. 
Mr. Thompson, what's it like to be demented? Suing folks like Rockstar Games with claims that you've invented. Yes, it's true. Even when after Kotaku, those guys owned you. Before we jump into Jack's latest article, let's set the tone a bit. Let me let me give you all some tidbits of information about who Jack Thompson is. Throughout Jack's career as an attorney, he has criticized many different video games, ranging from Call of Duty to Doom and most notably Grand Theft Auto. Here's how it usually goes down. Some teenage dipsh** social outcast decides that other people have to suffer because they can't fit in and wah wah wah. So of course the natural conclusion is to acquire firearms, plan out a massacre, and then go on a killing spree. The news heavily covers the attack more often than not, basically functioning as the f***ing bat symbol to let Jack Thompson know that there's a new tragedy out there for him to exploit. He contacts the families of the victims of the attack in order to use them as nothing more but an emotional argument to further his cause, and to make a lot of money on the side as a uh, legal representative of the victims, of course. He then heads towards any TV show, any news station, any newspaper, any news site that will give him the time of day to spew his bullshit, which usually goes a little something like this. In every school shooting, we find that kids who pull the trigger are video gamers. Because, you know, it's not like youth violence has been on a steady decline ever since video games became all the more popular or anything. I guess he's just oblivious to the fact that correlation does not equal causation. Nor does he bother to mention the fact that video games are, um, insanely popular among the youth. They- that's like the number one hobby for a lot of kids in a lot of neighborhoods. But of course he's not gonna mention that, because that would make sense and it would actually be detrimental to his case. No, this is a lawyer we're talking about. You, you have to dismiss any variable that might not be suitable for your case. So in short, the modus operandi of Jack Thompson is to wait until a tragedy eventually takes place, see if it gains any news media traction, and then jump on the first opportunity to lure in the affected families into legal battles with the video game industry. Frankly, this is deplorable behavior. It really is. Jack Thompson gives no sh at all about the suffering that these people have to endure after a tragic event like the Parkland shooting. All he cares about is furthering his own cause and profiting from their pain. Like with video games, Thompson has dabbled a lot in the music industry and in politics. He actually made attempts at sabotaging the success of 2 Live Crew's album As Nasty As They Wanna Be. Why, you may ask? Well, because they supported Janet Reno, one of Jack Thompson's political rivals. Now this brings me to a fantastic example of the absurdity that is Jack Thompson. <laughs> this is an excerpt from the Jack Thompson Wikipedia page. Janet Reno. Thompson first met Janet Reno in November of 1975 when he applied for a job as an assistant state attorney in Miami-Dade County, Florida, but was not hired. In 1988, he ran for prosecutor against then-incumbent Dade County State Attorney Janet Reno, after she had declined his request to prosecute Neil Rogers. Oh, and uh, by the way, Neil Rogers is a radio host Jack was feuding with at the time, simply because Neil had the sheer audacity to air some lowbrow parody songs. He basically got into a feud with a shock jock radio DJ over some naughty lyrics and parody songs. And like I said, Janet refused his request to prosecute Neil Rogers. Thompson gave Reno a letter at a campaign event requesting that she check a box to indicate whether she was homosexual, bisexual, or heterosexual. I came up with this clever plan <laughs> of handing her a questionnaire, asking her, you know, are you heterosexual, or are you bisexual, or are you uh, homosexual, and so forth. Thompson said that Reno then put her hand on his shoulder and responded, I'm only interested in virile men. That's why I'm not attracted to you. He filed a police report accusing her of battery for touching him. Mmm. 
<laughs> Why not have a sip in the middle of this? In response, Reno asked Florida Governor Bob Martinez to appoint a special prosecutor to investigate. The special prosecutor rejected the charge, concluding that it was a political ploy. Reno was ultimately re-elected with 69% of the vote. Thompson repeated allegations that Reno was a lesbian when she was nominated as U.S. Attorney General, leading one of her supporters, Lieutenant Governor Buddy McKay, to dismiss him as a kook. Okay, you got it? So, the rap group 2 Live Crew supports Janet Reno, his rival, so he attempts to destroy the success of their album. He then fails at convincing her to prosecute a radio host for playing some silly parody songs. And thus, he starts asking her very personal questions about her sexual orientation, as if it's any of his f***ing business to begin with. And when she puts her hand on his shoulder and gives him a smarmy response, he accuses her of battery. He then starts spreading rumors about her being a lesbian. Again, this is just one example of how immature and idiotic Jack Thompson's behavior is. But then again, come on, let's not call him names, because that would just be taking this too far. But alas, the Janet Reno incident did not end there. In 1990, after his election loss, Thank you, God. Thompson began a campaign against the efforts of Switchboard of Miami, that'd be a social service group of which Reno was a board member. Thompson charged that the group had placed homosexual education tapes in public schools. Switchboard responded by getting the Supreme Court of Florida to order that he submit to a psychiatric examination. Thompson did so and passed. Thompson has since stated that he is, quote, the only official certified sane lawyer in the entire state of Florida. But eventually, after years and years of abusing his position in law to slander and falsely accuse his oppositions of crimes they haven't committed, he was disbarred by the Florida Bar. After this, Thompson remained fairly quiet as far as media attention goes. He did have a few run-ins with various companies and public figures here and there, but nothing out of the ordinary for a slimy lawyer. Eventually, he did make an attempt at suing Facebook. Apparently, a bunch of people had made mean posts about him on the website, most of which Facebook neglected to remove because who cares? I mean, I don't know, maybe it's fine for him to spread rumors about somebody else's sexual orientation, but it's wrong for Facebook to allow their users to call Jack Thompson mean names. As to be expected, this case went nowhere at all because Facebook, believe it or not, is not legally bound to removing rude messages. But yeah, not a lot of things happened after that. Jack Thompson remained quiet and out of the public's eye. That is, until 2016, when he was interviewed by the online magazine Inverse. During this interview, Jack revealed that he had been teaching civics classes to inmates at a Florida prison. <laughs> Because, you know, if, if you're gonna learn something, then it's always a good idea to be taught by somebody who was so bad at that very thing that they lost their license to do said thing. I mean, it just goes to show that you should have no expectations for competence at all in the American prison system. So, now that we are all up to speed on the magnificent beast that is Jack Thompson, what has he been up to as of late? Back in March of 2018, the United States White House put up a video on their official YouTube channel. The video was a compilation of violence in modern day video games, basically intended to instill discomfort in concerned parents, voters, and the anti-violent video games crowd. You gotta love how the same government that engages in rectal feeding as a means of questioning suspects decided to push out this video as if they have any room at all to shame the video game industry for being too violent. Around this time, US President Donald Trump partook in a meeting with White House officials and various members of the video game industry to uh, discuss the supposed correlation between violent video games and gun violence. I don't know about you, audience, but I don't think guns are to blame, nor do I think violent media is to be blamed. The people I blame are, you know, the ones shooting all of those
those people. A few days before this meeting took place, Jack Thompson swooped in out of the blue and began to send out an influx of emails to journalists, especially some of those who work for gaming news sites. Here's an email Jack Thompson sent to Kotaku's Jason Schreier. Schreier? I don't know. So, Jason, is Trump gonna meet up with the Mexican drug cartel lords to ask them what to do about the opioid crisis? I need to be in that meeting, and I'm working on it. Trust me, Jack Thompson. Yes, that Jack Thompson. You gotta love the pure, unfiltered arrogance that oozes from anything Jack Thompson writes. As far as I can tell, Jack Thompson never attended the meeting. I could be wrong, but I could not find a single source to back that up. You know, it's almost like even the anti-violent video games people consider Jack Thompson detrimental to their cause. Like I said in the beginning of this video, Jack recently put out an article on the Tallahassee Democrat, a riveting and oh-so-well-known newspaper in the, uh, magnificent and not at all insane state of Florida. A simple way to stop school massacres. Enforce video game laws. Right off the bat, you know that this article is gonna be nothing but a crock of sh And if you just happened to not infer that from the title, then have a look at this. This is how the article begins. A picture of Jack Thompson's beautiful mug with a piece of text saying, your turn. It's kind of like you're playing a game of tag with Jack Thompson, out of all people. I love it. The South Florida Sun Sentinel reported this about the February 14th, 2018 killer of 17 in the Parkland School Massacre. Quote, I'm a bad kid. I want to kill. Cruz, now 20 years old, ominously told a teacher in middle school. I strongly feel that Nicholas is a danger to the students and faculty at the school. Cruz's 8th grade language arts teacher wrote in a behavioral evaluation, I do not feel that he understands the difference between his violent video games and reality. Oh, of course. You know, it can't just be that Nicholas Cruz was a cruel and obviously mentally unstable egomaniac, a person who felt like society and his community had wronged him despite them doing really nothing at all to him. Nah. It's those pesky video games. You know, I don't think the teacher was trying to say that video games are to be blamed. I think she was implying that Nicholas Cruz has a detachment from the seriousness of the pain he wants to inflict on other people. The Miami Herald has reported that Nicholas Cruz played hyper-violent video games up to 15 hours a day, which eerily is the same number of hours Sandy Hook's killer of 26 souls trained on Doom, Call of Duty, and Grand Theft Auto. You know who else played a lot of video games most hours of the day sometimes? I did. As a teenager, I used to play all kinds of games at all kinds of hours of the day. It's not good for you, it's really unhealthy, but I find it hard to believe that a video game addiction is any indication of a killing spree to come. In fact, video game addictions are among the most common addictions for children, teenagers, and young adults alike. You might as well just blame any other common addiction while you're at it. I smoke? What made you flip out like that, man? Was it the drugs or what? I got caught up in the caffeine addiction, CJ. Why you just didn't quit, man? Uh oh, monster energy for life, dog. Ugh. Ugh. Yet again, correlation does not equal causation. As for Nicholas Cruz playing hyper violent video games, you know who else plays them? Millions of other teenagers all the time, the vast majority of which would never even think about doing the same thing Cruz did. Cruz's own mother, now deceased, attributed his violence to his video games and withdrew them as a temporary punishment. In Call of Duty, you use smoke canisters to hide from your virtual reality targets, something Cruz did in reality. So video games don't just increase the appetite to kill, they train teens to kill efficiently. By all means, I do not mean to speak ill of the dead, but perhaps she should have reconsidered what she thought the root of his violent behavior was. Maybe, and this is just me, maybe, just 
fucking maybe she should have had him admitted to a mental hospital. And yeah, in Call of Duty, you do have the ability to use smoke canisters. You know why? Because they are, uh, really useful if you want to distract your enemies. I know this may come as a shock to you, Jack, but Call of Duty did not invent the concept of smoke canisters. They've been around since, like, the 1800s. The reason Nicholas Cruz used those is not because it looked cool in Call of Duty. Like I said, they make for a good distraction. You know, it kind of makes it difficult for people to pursue you when you have smoke surrounding you. The United States Department of Education's Federal School Safety Commission, created because of Parkland, issued a final report last month that acknowledges the nexus between Cruz's video game play and the massacre. <laughs> okay, so among the vast ocean of sources that contradict your theory, you found one obviously biased source that actually backs up your claim. Bravo, Jack. Are you gonna provide a quote? No, no, not at all. You're, all you're gonna do is point towards them and say, well, they agree with me. I don't consider them an authority on the matter, and even if I did, you pointing towards them would not amount to anything else other than an appeal to authority. Here's a pro tip. Use facts, jackass. Don't just expect me to defer to whatever your favorite organization says. In June of this year, the highly regarded World Health Organization formally concluded that video game addiction is a mental disorder that is treatable. What is the medical basis for such a conclusion? MRI brain scan studies at Indiana and Harvard universities show that teens process video games in the midbrain, which is the impulsive part of the brain, whereas adults process them in the prefrontal cortex, which intercepts emotion-driven copycat behaviors. This neurobiological age-based differential is why the US Supreme Court in 2003 struck down the juvenile death penalty. Now, I could not find a source to back up this claim, so I am gonna take it with a grain of salt. I mean, it is a Jack Thompson article, so I have to, but even giving him that, does it really prove that restricting violent video games would prevent school shootings? No, because all this amounts to is... Adults and teens process video gaming differently. As for how video game addiction is a mental disorder, um, you haven't explained it. All you've done is sidetrack into a source that vaguely, if taken out of context, ever so slightly backs up your claim. Here's how video game addiction can be qualified as a mental disorder, at least in my opinion. If it is addictive to the point that it makes life difficult, then there you go. I think it's safe to say that at that point, it is a disorder. Here's the fix to help prevent school massacres by teen video game addicts. Just last month, the National Institutes of Health reported that digital entertainment alters the structures of young brains. This is simply another instance of you taking something out of context to back up your case. Most of the studies done on video games and brain activity showed that hand coordination and reflexes are often improved by playing video games. It doesn't, however, prove that you're any more likely to kill people in a massacre than somebody who hasn't played a game in their entire life. More than 40 state attorney generals have entered into consent decrees with retailers who agree that selling age-restricted products like alcohol and tobacco to underage kids is, quote, a fraudulent, unfair, and deceptive trade practice. Why? Because the retailers have represented to the public that they do not engage in sales to kids when they did. That's fraud. Similarly, the entire video game industry assures parents they do not sell mature rated video games to anyone under 17. It's a complete lie. The majority of video games 19 years after gamers Klebold and Harris authored Columbine are sold to individuals whose ages are not verified. And there we have it. Columbine. That's always the go-to card, isn't it? Klebold and Harris both played a lot of video games. Sure, yeah, they did. You know what else they did? They expressed anger issues and a growing disdain for a community they felt never understood them. While it doesn't excuse what they did, it might actually give you a better understanding of why they did what they did if you actually take your time to look into their ideas. You know, Jack, 
Something you like to say a lot is that uh, video games are often used as practice tools for people who want to carry out similar acts to what Harris and Klebold did. Now this is just my opinion, but you know what makes for better practice than playing Doom all day? Actually getting weapons and practicing, which is exactly what these kids did. You can easily find videos of this on YouTube. Eric and Dylan would on occasion head into the woods, shoot guns, and practice using using explosives. You never mention that, do you? <laughs> you never mention how they acquired their weapons in the first place, the fact that they practice, or even how they carried out the attack. All you ever really seem to give a flying f about are those evil Vidya games they played. But as for video game stores selling mature games to minors, I guess you could make a case. I mean, there is an age limit. An age limit which is often ignored. Do I really care about the age limit? No. <laughs> Do the kids buying the games care? No. Do the people selling the games care? More often than not, no. Do most parents even care? No. Even if you were to heavily enforce the ESRB rating by law, you're still gonna see millions of kids playing Grand Theft Auto and Call of Duty. You know why? Because most parents realize that it's not a big deal. You know, kinda like your career in politics. But uh, let's see how Jack wraps up the article, because I, I am eager to get to the end of this. <laughs> I don't know if you feel that way, but I do. This is fraud by an entire industry, the consequences of which are horrors like Parkland. All that is necessary for this dangerous fraud to stop is for states and the national government to apply deceptive trade practice laws that are already on the books to video game sales. This approach will be simple, constitutional, and effective. Simple, yes. Constitutional, that's debatable. Effective? Not really. You know, buying games on digital services like Steam is, is way more popular now than it's ever been. Not to mention piracy. You know, the kid could just ask a relative or a friend to buy the game. The kid could also just buy the game from somebody else. And when I say somebody else, I don't mean a business, I mean a private individual. People tend to trade stuff, you know? It's a thing we do on occasion. Jack. Listen, buddy, crazy people are gonna continue being crazy, whether M-rated games are sold to kids or not. Unfortunately, there really is no concrete solution to the, uh, school problem in the US. It's sad, it's horrible, and <laughs> you are the first person to exploit it, so I don't need to tell you this. Wait a minute, <laughs> what's this? The article actually ends with this. Jack Thompson is a former lawyer who has been an activist against the marketing and sale of adult video games to minors since he represented the parents of three schoolgirls shot and ki- Oh my god. This is disgusting. Hold on, let me- let me fix this. Done. I know you didn't notice me leaving or anything, but I trust me, I just got back from a smoke break and uh, while I was outside, I was like, how do I feel about all of this? I mean, I'm at the end of the video. I'm adding some finishing touches right now and is there anything I want to add before I wrap it up? So, <laughs> f*** it. I mean, I'm just gonna cut loose and say it, honestly. Nobody should ever take anything Jack Thompson says seriously. And here's why. All he cares about is making himself look like an upstanding moral crusader. And the way he goes about it is deplorable. It, it's exploitative, it's sickening. All he does is thrive off the emotional pain and panic that ensues whenever some dumb sh teenager decides to shoot up a school. Bear in mind that Jack Thompson is not a mentally unstable person. Remember, he took a psychiatric evaluation and passed. As Jack himself aptly puts it, I am the only officially certified sane lawyer in the entire state of Florida. I believe in all honesty that Jack Thompson is fully aware of the fact that everything he says and does when it pertains to video games is just on the face of it absurd. Let me give you some examples. In the past, he has expressed the following opinions. Sony is equivalent to what happened in Pearl Harbor. Bill Gates is responsible for the Virginia Tech shooting. Rockstar Games is a company that provides teenagers and kids with training material for causing human death and suffering. Again, this is not a mentally ill person who doesn't have a grasp on what they're saying. They are fully aware of the fact 
that all of this is just ludicrous. It's absurd. Jack Thompson is fully aware of this, and that is why I'm making this video. This is why I think we should once and for all dismiss anything Jack Thompson says from now on. Henceforth, I'm not gonna pay any mind to him. I'm done. When I began looking into Jack Thompson for the sake of making this video, I thought to myself, maybe I could make a sequel to this. I mean, I could have included like 50 more parts in this video, so of course, I have the ability to make another video. I have the material needed. Honestly, I don't want to do it. It's- it's sickening. I don't want to have any part in this beyond this video. All I'm gonna do from now on is express my disdain for this person. A person who I consider a blood-sucking parasite who exploits not just the US legal system, but also distraught families of tragedies for his own personal gain. Mr. Thompson, on the off chance you see this video, I have a, a few questions for you. You know, it'd be cool if you could answer some of this. Um... Have you no shame for uh, the way you conduct yourself? Have you no remorse for exploiting tragedies? Have you no hesitation when slandering others? Have you no reluctancy when you time and time again attempt to profit from some of the most vile aspects of human nature? Just answer me that. That'd be cool. But then again, I'm not expecting anything. I'm not expecting any answers. I mean, after all, you're nothing more but a parasite. And in my opinion, your article just goes to show that you really haven't learned a single thing in the past couple decades. The way I see it, <laughs> you're just as dishonest and exploitative as you've always been. Hey Mr. Thompson, that sound you hear is laughter From every single company that you've ever gone after, now we'll see Still you sue me Hey Mr. Thompson, it's free